All right, welcome to this week's CES meeting. It's January uh, 19. Yes, it is. Uh, and today we have two topics on the agenda, the first of which is Alex proposing uh, bulk revocation of proxies. And Leo uh, has said that he will join us at the half hour to talk about uh, structured clone uh, in advance of next week's plenary. Uh, Alex, take it away. Okay, so um, following up on last week's discussion at the end of the meeting, um, I suggested maybe it's time to bring about a new argument to proxy dot revocable, and maybe the new proxy, but I haven't decided that whether we should do that or not. Actually, we haven't decided. Um, to suggest that the third argument could be a structure or an API for doing revocations of proxies as a group. Basically, my idea here is have a top level maker function, I'm sorry, a maker function off of proxy, which I'm temporarily calling revoker set. And the idea being, you can add a bunch, uh, you can add a, when you're creating a proxy, you can add it to a bunch of revoker sets or revocation signals um, as Bradley has suggested. And when you want to revoke, you send a revoke call to the set or one of the sets that the proxy belongs to and bang, it's gone. Um, so just to walk through the API here, I imagined proxy that revoker set would provide this uh, revoker set object, which had only one public method, a revoke method. And then you could pass and as many revoker sets as you wanted to proxy.revocable uh, as a third argument. Um, if TC39 doesn't allow that third argument, we could ask them to provide a, an alternative method for creating proxies, which at least here I'm calling revocable in sets. Bad name, but what I haven't got anything better. Um, and then I have an example here where we have three revokers. Uh, a revoker sets, the third being a shadow realm. Um, the simple idea there is, well, we, we were thinking about having shadow realms have a revoke. This is coming from Mark's original idea and saying, okay, if we're gonna have proxies in a shadow realm, might as well make that a revocable set as well. Um, so to, to dive in just a bit more, um, Here's a diagram that I had created for other purposes where I'm trying to illustrate what the proxies look like when it, where each realm is a plane on this graph. And the proxies themselves are hemispheres. The objects are full spheres. Uh, shadow targets are dashed circles, et cetera. And the proxy cylinders, that's an artifact I came up with just to illustrate the connections between um, an, an original object and the shadow, uh, excuse me, the proxies that connect to it. So when you revoke the yellow realm, the proxies for on load on that third column to the right they don't know that the uh, onload is dead at that point, the, the onload original value. So with a revoker set tied to the realm, uh, one for the blue realm, one for the yellow realm, one for the green realm, if yellow.revoke is called, then with the revoker set concept, it would kill the onload proxies in the blue and green graphs that I've shown here. Is everyone following along so far? Okay, hearing no objections, I'm gonna continue on. Sounds good. So the only guarantee that a revoker is held in this model is either if the outside, if the client code held that revoker or if the proxy itself still exists. Uh, Alex, I... So what was that about about the hold on, hold on a second hold on a second uh so when you say that you revoke 
you revoke on one side, you revoke on other sides. Um, I'm assuming that all these is in the same realm, not different realms. If you're revoking yellow, if you're calling yellow dot revoke, um, and I'm and I'm frankly I was unclear, or rather, I I was unclear on my understanding of what revoke would mean. Um, the idea is you're killing all the proxies in the yellow realm, but because you're also putting placing that um, on load original. No, I'm I'm getting a little bit tongue tied here. I'm sorry. Yeah. So if it is between realms, the problem is that how do you share the set between different realms? You you cannot share the, the same set between different realms. So well, you you have the, to you have to probably create some sort of mechanism or some sort through the membrane itself to be able to right go and this one is, realm to the other one. This is why when I was talking about creating a proxy, we would have an array of revokers sets, and any of those revoker sets could revoke that proxy. Any of them. Right, but but those sets are are not going to be for another realm. Because I cannot. Know, I, I cannot speak to that particular argument, Carrie. No, um, there is some prior art actually with abort signals on this, where abort signals can be passed across realms. And maybe that's why Bradley was and uh, Matthew were proposing that idea because I hadn't thought about that. Um, yeah, so if it is not a set, it is some sort of a board signal like system, then, then yes, so you, should, you should probably be able to share that. Um, and that's, a per that's actually a really good argument for Bradley's proposal, which again, I hadn't considered that when I wrote this up and I didn't really realize that that was going to be a potential problem. Um, give me a couple minutes to finish my presentation, and then, and then I'd like to hand it off to Bradley, please. Um, a few open questions that I came up with while thinking about this. Um, if you're looking at the proxy constructor, not uh, proxy.revocable, but the constructor itself, um, there's basically, there's two arguments for both of those. But if we add a third argument to proxy.revocable, then the question is, do we add the same to new proxy? And there's a good argument for, for that. There's a good argument against that. The argument in favor would be consistency in the arguments. The argument against is that new proxy, what the proxies that new proxy creates are not currently revocable. So I don't know what the right answer is there. Um, I had brought up nested realms. I'm going to leave that for a later discussion. My, the last observation I'm going to make is that we have one shot to get this API right, at least for this third argument that I'm proposing to proxy.revocable. Um, once it gets into the language, if we've made a mistake, it will be very hard to change it. And that's why I wanted to have the debate early on to see what the shape of it should be so that we can figure that out and close that debate before it becomes, uh, basically nip it in the bud before it becomes a problem later on. Well, there's an interesting thing that you point out there because um, if a revocable set or an array of, rev of revocability sets were added as an argument to the proxy constructor, uh, making any proxy revocable um, without really, without it would, it, in a way that is not backward incompatible, it would be a backward compatible change to the proxy constructor that would introduce revocability to the proxy itself. That would sort of imply that proxy dot revoke re revocable itself is superfluous and was a design mistake, which is an interesting, interesting shadow effect of it. Um, I don't know whether it's a good idea to make all proxies revocable, though. I didn't. I didn't. Um... Let, me, let me make sure I understand. The proxy is only revocable if you pass this extra argument. Yes. All right. The argument. Yeah. So I would say it's not so much that. I mean, so the the specific API design for proxy dot revocable 
would in retrospect either be a mistake or be something that could be seen as syntactic sugar for, the, for a particular use pattern of the new API. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to say that the API design could have been a mistake, but proxy.revocable um, uh, altogether, uh, I just want to, to, to um, uh, not say proxy.revocable is a mistake because introducing the notion of system supported revocability into the proxy abstraction rather than having it just be user level solved the fundamental garbage collection problem. It could not be solved otherwise. Yeah, for sure. There is definitely precedence on the web platform for introducing a new argument uh, like that. So I, I, I think adding as a third argument even to the base proxy constructor is totally fine. And depending on how careful we want to be about future proofing, we might want to add an options bag where yes, reliability is a revo revoker sex or one of the options. Yep. Yeah, in TC39, in, in, in TC for JavaScript, we very rarely added new arguments, but I believe we have done them. Yeah, yeah, most recently error cause. That's what I thought, okay. Yeah. Um, Bradley, you had a counter proposal uh, or uh, an ev evolution of this proposal, I should say, um, uh, in terms of, abort controller abort signal, right? Yeah, I will start by saying this is not polished. <laughs> it's it's stage negative one. So yeah. all all polish issues are forgiven. It's a lot more polished than whatever we have come up with. So <laughs> yeah, that, my, my, mine is just a uh, bare bones start the conversation document anyway. So I'm perfectly fine with it. And I should mention to the group, I did review Bradley's proposal um, I thought it was perfectly fine from a workability standpoint. So my other comments were between him and me. And basically, I think if he wants to, if we want to go with his route, I'm fine with it. All right, Bradley, go ahead and uh, let's 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 see your your proposal. Okay, so this is mostly just a API that we're gonna dump out there with a terrible implementation that can't do any VM tricks to make it fast. Um, all the VM tricks that could make this fast are basically the same thing as promise state adoption that exists in VMs today. So you don't actually have to chain things constantly. Instead, you set things on the actual leaf nodes of promise chains um, rather than propagating through the chain. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're familiar with the abort controller API in the web and node, Dino, all that. Uh, this API is split into two classes that separate responsibility. One is going to be a revocation signal. And a signal is the thing that you use to observe uh, something. In this case, we're observing if something is already revoked or trying to register uh, some kind of handler that when it is revoked. Um, you can check if something's revoked by just reading dot revoked off of it. Um, you, in theory, could construct these signals on their own. This, I don't think we'd ever really have a desire for people to custom construct these stuff, these things. They most likely would always be paired with a controller. Um, the one thing here is a big question is, should you be allowed as a general JavaScript person, not the language, uh, to register a callback for when something is revoked? A, a synchronous signal or? That's a good uh, question. And we'll get into why it probably needs to be synchronous in a minute. Yeah. And synchronous makes things really upsetting. Yeah. But you really can't do it asynchronous. Why? We'll get to that in a minute. Um, okay. But yeah, uh, basically, you could have a convenience method or something. Their signals are interesting because you can have multiple kinds of combinators, just like promises. You could wait for everything. Okay. 
all the revocation signals to hit, any of them to hit, or other criteria, doesn't really matter. So it's just to note here, uh, we could have like revocation signal dot any, just like promise dot any, or race, or whatever. So I guess this should be race, not any. Oh gosh. So revocation signal, it's the way you observe things. A controller, uh, interestingly, separates the ability to pass the signal around from the ability to actually revoke it. Um, so this is some friendly revealing constructor hoodoo that basically makes revocation controller dot revoke a method to revoke the associated signal with it. Mm -hmm. So pretty similar in to how proxy dot revocable works. You get a revoke thing, you get a signal here instead of the actual proxy to work with. Um, so simple. The key important part here is at least when we've been designing some stuff with a Bort controller, you don't want to pass the notification system around and have that notification system grant people the ability to revoke um, your stuff. Yeah. So you want two different things. You could do it by having a function. You could do that. But uh, the key part here is with revocation sets, um, you're passing the um, actual ability to revoke as kind of the way that it's observed because you have to pass in that actual function into a revocation set. So the ability to revoke something and the ability to have a reaction to the revocation are inherently tied in that model. Um, the web did this for a variety of reasons. If you really wanna go look up stuff on abort controller, feel free. Can, can you say that again for me? Uh, so with the revocation set model, in order to observe or react to revocation, which is their purpose to basically chain revocations across an object graph, yeah. you have to actually not only give the observer, because there isn't really one, there's revocation sets, but there's no way to do dot observe or whatever on it. You have to actually pass the ability to revoke around. So let's say I wanted to um, have some way of being notified that all the objects in yellow are being revoked. Well, here you could, I guess you could pass the revocation set around for all of yellow, but then um, it's really designed to add every individual revocation function into the set. Um, so now you're getting into, you're passing around arrays of revocation sets because I don't know how they're gonna combine. And so you always pass around arrays of revocation sets because you don't wanna pass around the revoke functions themselves. Um, with this model, it's just, you pass signals around and signals can be combined. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's good and bad in that. Um, with this model, the, there's an entanglement issue potentially between signal and controller um, because they kind of have magical association with each other. Yeah. I was. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is exactly uh, uh, revocation controller is ex is analogous to what Q dot defer returned or what Agoric's promise kit returns, I think. That's a pair of the sender and receiver, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm very behind. I'm very behind. Sorry. Um. So I'm still trying to understand under which circumstances you want a, one of these signals or sets to be used across ROM. 
So what are the use cases for you to have to revoke something uh, or to sign a, a revocation um, that will affect proxies on both sides of, uh, of the membrane, in this case, a cross realm membrane. Um, so, as a personal standpoint, I don't do that a lot, but with abort controller, it's pretty important to do this when you have worker threads um, because a worker thread needs some way of seeing that it has been actually aborted and it can be doing a long running blocking thing, especially with WebAssembly. And so you can either like pass around a shared array buffer or something like that, or use the abort controller and abort signal. So the canonical right. use case for this kind of thing in Go, uh, pardon, it, Go idiomatically threads something analogous to this through anything that's doing IO. Um, and so if you're writing an HTTP server, you'll get uh, effectively equivalent of an abort signal uh, at the beginning of your HTTP request, and you are obliged or you are able to use that as the basis for all of the work you do on behalf of the request, such that all of that can be discontinued if the request times out. Right, but, but we're talking about revocation of proxies now. Right. Not on IO. Yeah. So how does this map well to proxies revocation across realm? I'm unclear on that personally. My counter proposal is largely off of yeah, let's not, not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex, it, can you speak to the motivating use case? Uh, sure. Um, for me, this all came back to my um, multi realm, I'm, I'm sorry, um, hypergraph membrane approach, where and I tried to illustrate that in the uh, in the um, diagram that I put up there, um, where you had a, where you had original values and proxies in the same uh, realm, in the same plane of that graph. And if you revoke an original object it, via the shadow realm.revoke method that has been proposed, then the proxies in the other object graphs that point to that original value do not know that they are dead at that point. They cannot know because the realm revocation did not communicate to them. Right. So, I, so I, I, my I solution, you. my solution was okay. Let's create these uh, revocation sets, and then on proxy revocable, you could specify more than one set. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, before we before we get to the the, the solution, so. When you have a membrane, the membrane doesn't necessarily understand the nature of the things that you're trying to transfer through the membrane to the other realm. So if I have a realm uh, who's um, trying to communicate with another realm via a membrane, and I have this subject that happens to be a revocable proxy, the membrane will not know about it. So the job of the membrane is simply to say there is an object in this side, I will create a proxy on the other side and they are somehow entangled. And, and so I'm having a hard time understanding how is that the membrane will have knowledge about a revocable proxy. I think that is not a proxy created by the membrane itself. I think that may be where you and I are disagreeing, sir. Um, frankly, from my perspective in ES membrane, the membrane is what creates those proxies and it also manages the revocation. It does both. Well, I, I it, think it, it, doesn't, it doesn't actually invoke, uh, what, let me rephrase that. Um, how do I put this? No, I, I, I think, so I think there is a disconnection. So I, I, I think we, we are in agreement that when a membrane sees an object on one side, it creates a proxy on the other side. And if we have a mechanism to disconnect the whole, the whole side of the membrane, the membrane should be able to do so. And the revocation works pretty well there. So it works pretty well. The, the part that I'm not sure is 
how come a membrane will receive a thing that is a revocable proxy and create a proxy on the other side that can be revoked when this object is revoked on the original side. Um, I understand that there might be a motivation for that, but I don't understand how the membrane will know that the object that the membrane is receiving to send it to the other side is, is actually a revocable proxy. So it's a, a I think mechanic I, problem that I, that I have, not a conceptual problem, like how I the think, membrane will know. I think the, the membrane knows because in my understanding, the membrane is what actually creates that proxy. Not the realms, but the membrane that owns that uh, administrates the realms. Is it because you have an object coming from another realm that might be disconnected at some point? And when I say disconnected, I mean revoke all the, all the proxies that this side of the realm sees. Like let's say the blue is sent, or the, the yellow is sending you an object created in yellow and uh, is now seen by- one, one moment, Bradley, can I take the screen back and share the diagram that I drew up? I'm sorry, I, I just figured this might be, it might be more efficient if we actually saw the same diagram that we're talking about here. Okay, so if yellow creates an object and give it to blue and blue somehow share that object with green, something like that, where, one of the disconnectable disconnectable membrane um, realms might be providing an object to someone else through um, going through the blue side. So the, from yellow to blue, from blue to green. And now you decide that you're gonna kill yellow, revoking all the proxies there and that has consequences on blue and green because the object that you provide to the other side uh, is no longer available. Is that something that you, is, is that in the realm of what you're thinking about? Yes, that is exactly the I problem think. that we're trying to solve here, sir. Okay. Okay, so, so it's, in the diagram, it's uh, left two cases, right? An object in blue created in blue uh, being shared with yellow and then further shared with uh, green. Um, so their, their proxies are stacked. And from what I understand is yellow, um, the membrane mechanism inside yellow would realize this is a proxy already for blue when it shares it with uh, green. Uh, and so it would... Um, Pipe the what? What would happen exactly um, regarding the revocation here? Yeah, I think what the case that you're saying it will, it will be like if yellow is being disconnected, all the proxies associated to yellow should be disconnected on different sides. Yes, that would be the HTML and body proxies here, but also because yellow is proxied by on, by the blue, I'm sorry, yellow.onload is proxied by blue and green. I want to kill those proxies at the same time. So it seems, uh, Matthew, I think it's more like if I'm interacting with another side and that side is providing me with objects that I'm creating proxies of, if the other side gets disconnected, whether that I'm the one disconnecting it or for some reason it's disconnected by someone else, I should be able to revoke all the proxies associated to the objects related to the jellos itself. So, I, so I, I still don't think that the cross realm sign, a signal or set is, a, is a, a thing that we might need. I believe is more about in the same realm having the ability to revoke proxies mm -hmm. and the, the membrane might be able to take care of certain things like putting all the proxies coming from yellow if, if in blue the membrane in the blue side will be able to track everything coming from yellow and put it into a set and when i say anything that comes from yellow is a proxy of a object that exists in yellow in whatever shape or form 
and I track those and I get a sign of, at some point at the membrane level that yellow is being disconnected and I need to cancel out all the, the proxies that I already create for yellow to eliminate any kind of issue there. Um, but I don't think it will be really, it will be one centralized array of, of sets or sign out that you distribute across different realms. I, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing this as a necessity more than, or it will be a coordination of the membrane doing some of this work to keep track of who is disconnected and who is not, and then do something about objects coming from that. I have a question about the interpretation of this diagram. Um, is, is yellow conceptually in between green and blue? Which is to say, if the, the, the proxies from, from green uh, uh, the, the, you have the cylinder, say the, the leftmost one, for example, um, is, the, is the green proxy a proxy to blue or is it conceptually a proxy to yellow to blue? Uh, generally speaking, these are proxies directly, uh, these are proxies to the original object. Now we could do special distortions, Chris, to have a proxy to a proxy to the original object, but that is not the intent here. Chip, I, I think the, the idea, well, at least I, I, as I interpret it, it's like there are three objects here. Two are blue, one is yellow. All the other ones are just proxies of those three objects. Right, okay. And for that matter, Chip, I should emphasize, when you said between, that is absolutely not the intent of these diagrams. You could swap planes very easily. Right, right. So, so the, 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 the vertical ordering of the planes is, is completely arbitrary just because you have to put them on the screen somewhere. Yes. Um, okay. Okay. So yeah, that, so that, that was confusing. That yellow, yellow object, the omload is being shared with blue and green. And the two at the top are shared with yellow and green. They see some of it uh, or something, the proxy of it. Yeah. I so i mean with either solution i think we have a problem like if we go by the idea that like yellow has uh, the html uh, object that it passes on to green um I, I assume from this diagram if yellow is revoked um the green proxy might would still be alive because it would be connected directly to blue so that that's my first question that yeah. can you say that again can you run that again so with this diagram um, yellow receives HTML and passes it on to green. No, no, not necessarily, but, but okay. sure, it could be. We assume this could be. Set up that, that way. Um, so it's a blue object that ultimately ends up in green having traveled through yellow. No. No. But it could be, Alex, it could be. It could be. Could the be it could be if you design a distortion for that yeah. purpose. Right. So that's why I want to get at. If, if, is the goal that if you revoke yellow for the green proxy to still uh, be uh, active and connected to blue or uh, to be revoked because it has traveled to yellow in the, in, in the meantime? If yellow, I'm sorry, if green is a proxy to the yellow for the HTML column, we're talking about if the green proxy is a proxy to the yellow proxy, then the verification of yellow by necessity kills the green right. proxy, right. but only in that situation. Yeah, but like in, in our case, for example, at software, we never do that. We always go through blue. So if yellow wants to share something with green, it goes through blue. So it goes back to blue and blue, give it to green, because it's the Marshall realm and the, the realm doing marshalling. So in that case, you kill yellow by green still alive. There's no, no problem with it. But if you, if you have these multi layer, yeah, you, you, you get, but, but again, like the idea is always, at least in my mind, the mechanics of it is that a realm is giving the sign out to create a proxy on the other side. So in this case, in that scenario, yellow is telling green, hey, I have an object here, go and create a proxy of it. And when it does that, green itself will be able to 
add that proxy to a revocable set. And when green gets disconnected, it could revoke all this, something like that. Um, so on green itself, it doesn't have, it, yellow doesn't have a saying, I would say, on that process. Mm -hmm. Well, what I want to get at is that in neither sol solution, um, you would need, on the proxy created, you would need a, a signal object, which would have to come from somewhere else. Uh, That's the part that I, I still don't and, see. And so in, in either case, uh, they wouldn't go through the, the callable binary. So I, I, I don't see how actually either design uh, work would work here. So in summary, oh, I, so in summary, there is a possibility that this is not workable when that uh, that broadcast of revocation is not workable in the case of uh, piercing a realm. However, I think that if we stopped at that, that we would not have given service to the proposal. Well, the, the 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 being able to having a proc a revo revocable realm was the inspiration of this idea, but not the motivating use case. Right, Alex um that's fairly accurate yes all right so uh, so on matthew's point uh i want to make sure that the, 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 at least that we look at it so matthew i think the disagreement that i have with what you said is that is the 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 sign all that you mentioned that is needed by a green is not associated at least not in my mind it's not associated to the fact that yellow is giving you an update that sign all is associated to the fact that someone is creating green. Right. What I meant is that the, the signal has to, um, the signal has to come from somewhere and it's not going to be green that creates a signal or, or, or maybe it's green that uh, creates a signal and that it triggers it based on uh, some, uh, some call from somewhere. I, yeah, it, it could be, but but, it, it, but I think the important point that I'm trying to make is that it's not about someone else giving you an update. It's about the um, the creation of the realm and the mechanics of that realm. Like an example would be green can be a realm that uh, has a membrane that connects to yellow and blue. And green wants to make sure that if ever an error occur in that realm, uh, it will it will automatically disappear itself, something like that. But there's no sign off outside for green to understand that there is an error going on and wants to revoke all the proxies because we don't know the implications of that error. So it, it implodes itself, basically. It could be uh, that it could be that green. It's being created by someone else. Let's say the Marshall in realm blue and the Marshall in realm decides when to eliminate green. Let's say that the blue is just creating a visualization of an iframe. So it creates a realm for the iframe. And somehow when the disconnection side, disconnection of the iframe, the virtual iframe happens, it will go ahead and revoke all the proxies created in that realm, something like that. Uh, so blue is in control of giving the signal to green and green will have a, to track down what are all the proxies that you want to revoke or something like that to emulate that's to to emulate what the what happens with the dom today and the iframes like when the iframes is disconnected all these objects are kind of running like like they don't know what to do like the pseudo revocable objects uh, that are platform objects like the dom html stuff like that you you will not be able to interact with them anymore i think at the end of the day i don't know enough about membranes to see internally when those revocation structure are uh needed and so what so what shape of api for revocation would be useful um i was trying yeah um, it, it's not obvious that either one would work to me. It occurs to me that in order, uh, well, perhaps it would be necessary or helpful at least to be able to obtain a revocation signal from an arbitrary proxy if one is present. Um, like given an arbitrary object, which might be a proxy, um, 
get a revocational get a revocation signal from it so that uh, a marshalling layer that is attempting to uh, respect that revocation would be able to observe it and and, um, uh, and, and, and observe it across that boundary. That, that would create an, a way to differentiate. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. That Not necessarily. A, a, a revocation signal that never revokes is indistinguishable from a revocation signal that does. Oh, in any case, it seems iffy and dissatisfying and maybe the basis of a proof by contradiction. I don't know. Um, I don't think a, that we've got for me, that's a far, that's a, um, so for me, that's a far more interesting question. Um, that that than this one, because I think this one, if if the motivation is membrane that we were talking about whether the motivation was membrane or not if the motivation is membrane i don't think we need to have an api for that because the membrane already does a creation of every proxy that the membrane incubates from sign off from someone else uh, or another realm or the other side of the membrane or something like that uh, and and the membrane is perfect perfectly capable of implementing something like this with today's technology and it, this one is not going to make it easier or harder, I would say. But the one that you mentioned is the one that um, seems more interesting to me. Like the membrane receives something. It doesn't know what it is. But if it is revocable, we want to know it because we want to revoke the proxy on the other side. Let's, um, let's, uh, I, I find that to be a satisfying conclusion. Uh, uh, that, that this, that, that, it seems likely that uh, realm boundary membranes are not a uh, a motivating use case for this. But let's uh, let's get to the end of Bradley's presentation because I think that there's um, there's some topic there. There's something uh, that I think that we need to dig into, regardless of whether we get revocable proxies. And that is, what would JavaScript surface as a um, a synchronous revocation signal or something like that, re uh, re regard regardless of whether we end up with revocable sets. I agree. I'd like, uh, it's something I've been toying with and, uh, and I'm actually wondering why, what's not sufficient in promises, uh, to do the, uh, the same. Yeah. The so might be observability of the current state. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that actually is, um, I think I can speak to that, um, which is, to, so, so we're, we're caught in attention here is that promises look like, and are, uh, look like they're the right primitive for a revocation signal or a cancellation signal, um, except for the fact that they are not synchronously observable. And that is by design, right? We, we, <laughs> uh, being able to synchronously observe a promise is, is, uh, is an anti-pattern, um, but, on the other hand, for bulk revocation of proxies, um, for the purposes of a membrane, um, Mark, catch me if I'm wrong here, my understanding is that that must be synchronously observable and broadcast synchronously in order to, in order to provide the security guarantees of, of, of membrane revocation that we desire, right? Uh, the... You... <laughs> You certainly want the membrane as a whole to be synchronously revoked, to be atomically revoked. Um, yep. uh, on the other hand, I mean, so 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 the the te the tension here is that uh, let's distinguish three levels of synchronous observability. There's what promises themselves do, which have zero synchronous, synchro, synchronous observability. There's uh, uh, something like promises, but where there's a synchronous call you can make to inquire, is it revoked? Uh, so that has, um, uh, let's call that um, uh, reactive or polling synchronous observability. 
And then there's notification where you register for a callback and you get the callback synchronously. I think the second is the sweet spot uh, for revocation, which is um, uh, you know, any proxies or, or whatever that want to jointly be, be atomically revocable can pull the, um, uh, for, this, for the revocation state before proceeding. Uh, the reason I'm scared of the third level, where, which is a synchronous callback, is that raises um, uh, reentrancy attack problems all over the place. Um, right. so, so, so something like a, a you know, that, that's mostly like a promise, but that you can make a synchronous query to, uh, I think might be the sweet spot for, rev for revocation. I mean, if it's, if it's clear from the beginning that there is this uh, synchronous callback uh, hazard, um, I, I mean, the yeah. problem. The problem is that um, A calls B. Uh, th this is the compositional problem of: Am I notifying you on my behalf, or am I notifying you on your behalf? Uh, that uh, if I'm an abstraction buried down a, sync a a call stack, and I'm aware of something that some state transition that I just did that others are interested in, and the notification arrangement that I'm involved in is a synchronous notification arrangement, then it's fine with me as a local abstraction to, sit, to synchronously notify them because I'm prepared for that. My caller, on the other hand, um, that, that called me, that, that, to which I reacted by making my state change, um, uh, it's, it might not be prepared for synchronous reentry by the things that I notify. So uh, you know, this goes back to the, the, you know, the distinction in my thesis between um, uh, sub-goaling and to-do lists. There's, am I notifying you because I need you to do something on my behalf as, as a sub-goal sub of what I'm doing to bring about my end result, in which case the composition with my caller needs to take that into account. I, my caller still understands that it's delegating to me performing some tasks, so I delegate to others to perform subtasks. Versus, uh, there are just other parties that are interested in being notified, um, and uh, that's too much of a burden for my for my caller to then take that into account that they might happen synchronously during my action. Yeah, I, I understand the, the compatibility hazards that this bring. However, I, I would say the web platform has this model of synchronous. Uh... The, web, the web platform is such a disaster, programmability in so ways. We should, the last thing we should do is emulate the web platform. Um, the, we're trying to build something that can actually be used reliably. And I'm glad that was recorded. Uh, Bradley, uh, if you can bring up your proposal again, um, I, I believe we weren't quite at the bottom of it, but you had alluded to um, a reveal for why. Um, well, we kind of talked about it right now. Okay. Um, basically, if you, if you do not notify synchronously, that means that nobody can actually hook into you for any kind of optimization. Um, they have to create barriers. So distinct points in code where it is pulled and checked. Yes. And... Yes. Yeah, and what that looks like is um, if, if the signal were asynchronous and we just used promises instead of creating a new thing, um, you would have a canceled promise that you would be thread through to anybody who's in, in interested in observing cancellation. And the, the polling would look something like um, uh, await promise.race uh, canceled and or undefined, uh, which has the behavior of observing the cancellation immediately if it has already been canceled. Um, so there's a, a caveat. Yeah. Uh, 
so the goal here is basically to produce an object graph that gets revoked synchronously. And if we start storing things in maps for caching purposes or any of those kind of normal optimizations, uh, and they don't get notified, that means any caching optimization with any object from these graphs should uh, pull these signals, now, what, otherwise what, they what, can what, be what, bad what, results. What I'm suggesting is a combination of synchronous polling when you want the information synchronously and asynchronous notification when you don't need it synchronously. There's no nothing wrong with asynchronous notification. I. I I would disagree because this means that every cache system on this object graph needs to account for it so it doesn't produce results from something that's been revoked. Uh, Alex, you have seconds. We're at the end of this meeting. Yes, I was going to point out that I think, um, I, I, I get this general sense that people are in favor of at least exploring this idea in general. Absolutely. Um, yes. What I'd like to see is I'd like to see, um, and maybe I'll do it myself, is draw up a, a uh, draft stage zero proposal in a repository, and um, then let's continue to iterate on it. Yeah. Um, I, want to, I want to have a lot of unanswered questions here. Yeah. Before we stop, I want uh, the, the just three more words in answer to Bradley. Unix signal handlers. Well, that seems as good of a place to stop as any. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll pick up on this um, perhaps even after TC39. Again, plenaries next week, we will not be meeting here. Um, and uh, we usually do not meet the week after. Do we wish to meet the week after TC39? Depend, I, I think we should leave it open if there is topics. All right, then but, we will discuss that at the uh, meeting list after we didn't get plenary. To discuss, um, Leo's uh, proposal, like I, I think that it would be good to um, to talk about it like right after. All right, I'm going to hand off this meeting to um, the uh, the next volunteer and stop recording now. Thank you, everyone. All right, see ya.